Good morning, happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far. We are back for our second edition of the weekly live. I think I'm gonna keep coming to you on Tuesdays. The energy is high. I've got my water here. I've finished my coffee. I'm probably gonna have another coffee, but not until after I drink my water. So we are ready to go. If you're watching this live, please comment team live. If you're watching this replay, please comment team replay. Hey, Amy, thank you so much for joining us. Today, we are talking all about relationships with food. This is a big one. Our relationship with food impacts our nutrition choices, especially when time gets tough. Yeah. Relationship with food is something that we should constantly be working on. No one has a perfect relationship with food. We all have a little bit of disordered eating, I guess you could say. That does not mean you have an eating disorder. But if you're someone who feels like they rely on food as a crutch for energy or to get you through the day or to cope, this is all part of your relationship with food. This is something that we talk in depth about inside of our one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching program and something that we are dedicating a whole program to in November. So we will talk about that in a little bit. But what we are diving into today is talking about relationship with food and how that affects us and how it is formed. So we have Amy here live with us. If you are watching this replay, please let us know down in the comments below. Let me know too, how is the weather by you? I think it's like going to be 68 today. It is sunny. After I do this, I might get out and go on a walk, but I have another call at noon. Haven't decided yet. I know I'm going to go to the gym and we'll go to the, go on a walk later, but that I digress too much information. So we're going to dive into relationship with food. Our relationship with food is formed at a very young age. When we are young, when we are born, our relationship with food is starting to be formed. Things that form our relationship with food and our thoughts about food when we are very, very young have to do with things that we hear about food. So the conversations and verbiage and adjectives that we might hear about food as we are growing up. If you're, someone in your family was saying this was bad or this was off limits or this is unhealthy or you can't have it, we start to internalize that information and say like, okay, we associate soda with being bad or having dessert as being bad or whatever it is. So our relationship with food is formed when we are very, very young and it evolves as we get older. In our program last month, um, the reset, we talked all about relationship with food in one of our trainings. I had them journal about how their relationship with food and what they heard around food had changed throughout the years. And this is something that you can do too, of like, think back to elementary school or when you were little, what were your thoughts around food? Was there food scarcity? Were you told you couldn't have things? Once you started to become more independent, what did your food choices look like? How did that change? And so on and so forth as well. So thinking about that, it still affects us to this day. I was having a conversation with a client yesterday who was cleaning out their camper. They just went on their last camping trip of the year over this past weekend. And she was saying how she was going through and getting rid of some of the old snacks that had been in there for the last six months. And she said when she was growing up and when she was younger, that food would have never lasted. That food would have been eaten up right away or eaten up as they were cleaning out it because we didn't want to waste anything. Now she's building a healthy and neutral relationship with food for herself, but also for her two boys as well too, knowing that they can have that stuff and not idolizing it or putting it up on a pedestal or saying this is something good or this is something bad, but knowing that it's available and if they want it, they can have it, but not triggering that response of like, we're getting rid of this, so I have to eat all of it. We were then diving into talking about how, you know, don't, things like donuts right now, it's apple cider donuts that season seasoning season you know things like that get really romanticized and like oh my gosh I can't wait to have it and it's not that we need to get rid of things like that that stuff can be part of a healthy relationship with food and part of your routine but the problem is when we put so much weight into this you know apple cider donut or whatever it is that we're having it on top of our usual routine we can go ahead and factor that in as part of our breakfast there's your carbohydrate right there how are we going to pair some protein and some color with it to help with balancing it out when we take away that luster of something of like, this is so special, I can't wait to have it, it's easier for us to peacefully coexist with it and not have that negative relationship with food too. If you're somebody who has found that they have used food as a crutch in the past, that they, um, you know, when times get tough, they either will skip meals or they'll come home at the end of the day and just binge and overeat. I was just on a call with a client who was saying how she tries not to do carbs at breakfast time, but then ends up craving carbs all afternoon and evening long. And that's what she ends up stacking on throughout the night. 
she'll grab donuts and muffins and uh, cupcakes and cookies and sweets and things like that because she's craving it. Knowing that we can have this stuff regularly helps to take away some of that craving that can also come with it too. A lot of it is also boils down to the psychological response and the neurotransmitters in our bodies, you know, serotonin and dopamine. I'll be diving into this inside of our November program. Um, but a lot of that stuff, if we can have it regularly and also find other ways to get in that necessary serotonin and dopamine to give you that feel good feeling hit, it takes away less of those cravings and it takes away less of that power that some of these sweets and things have over us. So the big thing is, is recognizing what that relationship with food that you have is and creating that plan of like, how can I better this? How can I take away the power that some of this food has over me and normalizing it rather than seeing it as something good or bad? Because we know food has no inherent worth. It doesn't make you bad because you had a cupcake. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make you good because you had an apple. There's more so nutrient dense things and energy dense things. And that's where we can kind of classify stuff into. But having a mix of both is important to also keep the joy in your life as well, too. So think about your relationship with food. Reflect on that and say, what are some things that we've played into this? What are some things that I've done? You know, how can I change the narrative around some of these foods that we're having so that I can come out of this in a more neutral situation and be able to factor this stuff in rather than have it be something that has the power over me or something that I feel such a major pull to, which then changes the whole trajectory of my day. Because if you're someone who's like, as soon as I have a donut, my day is down the tubes. It's not great. It's not going to go over well. Then we have to take that power away from the donut and put that power back into your choices and how you're feeling and being able to have those thought processes through. So We'll be diving more into relationship with food in our November program. I talked about this a little bit on Instagram yesterday, but I'm going to give you a little bit more deets today before all of the details in the branding drop on Friday. Our program for November is all about relationship with food. We are helping you stop that crave, binge, restrict, repeat cycle. So many people find themselves that they are having these strong cravings and that they're pulled towards something and they will go ahead and overdo it They'll binge on it and then they'll be like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Skip meals or skip snacks or skip necessary foods, nutrients over the next couple days and fall back into that cycle again. We're going into the holiday season. You know that you're going to be surrounded by foods that you might have, exactly Amy, by foods that might have this emotional pull over you. There's going to be foods that are around that you usually don't have. So you're going to feel like the, oh my gosh, I can't not eat these Christmas cookies cookies right now or we make this special trail mix and I can't stop eating this trail mix as I have it has this pull and this power over me hey Samantha thanks for um hopping on um so knowing that that is coming this program it's going to be a week long starting the week of November 7th I'm not giving you the name yet I'm not dropping the branding until Friday price goes up over this weekend um But this program is going to help you get into that better mindset, better relationship with food going into the holidays so you feel confident and ready to tackle all of it and giving food, taking away that power that some of that food has over you and giving it back to you and knowing your choices and how to navigate the holidays. Our other November program is all dedicated to the holidays. So we're not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. Details about that will be coming out in the next coming weeks. Um, But trying to take away that power that the food has over you, working on that relationship with food, stopping that crave, binge, restrict, repeat cycle, and helping to make sure that we're taking care of you. So this is all about our November program. So right now the price is only $150. Price will be going up to $200 after this weekend. It's starting November 7th. So if you are interested in this, I can drop the link down below or shoot me a message. You can comment this as well. I will send you the link to join us. This is going to be amazing. We're having three trainings and a Q&A, and I can't wait to share all this information with you. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be really helpful to get you in the right headspace, the right mindset, the right focus going into the holiday season 
while feeling confident and knowing that you can have that cookie and your day will not be ruined. It does not have the power over you. So thank you guys so much for joining. The other thing too, one last reminder is that we do have our masterclass this coming Friday, the weight loss failure fix, where we're diving into why all of these things have not worked for you in the past and how we can change that going forward. So there is still time to join that. It is currently $44 price by Friday will be $66. So if you have not joined it, Time is still available. You can still join that. I'll drop that link down into the comments below as well. It is now 11:11. I need to go drink some water before I hop on and do a training on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If any questions about our November program or you're ready to join in, shoot me a message or comment below and I will send you over that discounted link before the price goes up to full price to $200 at the end of this weekend. Yeah, end of this weekend. All right, have a wonderful day, guys. See you soon.